Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Boy, happy trade deadline day. Happy state of the offense Tuesday here on Purple Daily. Daily Vikings entertainment. Um, if any news breaks, if the Vikings make some sort of jaw-dropping Ooh. trade, we will drop everything and we will do an emergency episode. The Lions snag Zadarius Smith, former friend of the Purple, already earlier this morning. Uh, Dak Prescott was placed on injured reserve. Jerry Jones said on the same radio show he threatened to get canceled two weeks ago. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. Because he could go out. Because he could fire those two and go out and get two people that could ask the questions better than they could. Yeah, a lot of so a lot of, a lot of things happening around the National Football League. Uh, we've got some interesting nuggets sprinkled within State of the Offense Tuesday here. But you guys have asked when is the next time you're going to do a watch party or a live Vikings vent line this Sunday, Judd, at the official sports bar, neighborhood sports bar of the Sports Dad, Park Tavern in St. Louis Park, watch party and live vent line afterward. It's going to be great fun. Uh, some some great drinks, some great eats, and, and of course, we'll be able to watch, as you can see right there on your screen, Minnesota at Jacksonville, National Football League, of course. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. Park Tavern, located at the corner of Louisiana Avenue South and and Highway 7, always a fantastic uh, setup. Heck, you know what? Come early and bowl. Stay late and bowl. So many things that you can do. Pre-game at, at Judd's. Uh, yeah, no. Post-game at Judd's. Nope, nope, nope. My house will not be. Uh, In fact, let's just, let's just spill over. No, 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 unfortunately, too. Spidex will be at, at my house with Finch at that time. So, so I'll be having work done, maintenance work on Sunday. I know it sounds rare, but I only have so much time to carve out. So, unfortunately, it all has to stay, or fortunately for you, it all has to stay at Park Tavern. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to hanging out with with you guys. But also, hey, thank you for continuing to send. I was just told yesterday, I was told, I was told that uh, actually many of the Hy-Vee Fast and Fresh locations had run out of these 32-ounce Pepsi, wow. Justin Jefferson souvenir cups and have had to restock because you guys have been uh, rating them in a good way. So, yeah, go into a, a local Hy-Vee Fast and Fresh. Go grab your Pepsi souvenir Justin Jefferson cup. Scan the QR code on the side for your chance to win Victor's Ride as well, a glorious Vikings-themed Polaris ATV. Pepsi's also giving away a solo pizza stove, Vikings autograph merchandise. Go get your Justin Jefferson Pepsi souvenir cups at Hy-Vee Fast and Fresh locations and keep sending those photos at Phil Mackey on Twitter slash X. Okay, state of the offense. So we'll give you the different rankings in some of the offensive categories, and then we'll get to the talking points. Scoring offense, halfway through-ish the season, Vikings are eighth in scoring. Now, that does include a couple defensive touchdowns, but it's a top 10 scoring offense. 11th in yards per play. 14th in offensive expected points added. 14th in offensive DVOA. Third down conversion rate, ninth. Red zone touchdown rate, seventh turnover rate after some more turnovers this last weekend, back down to 27th. So that's kind of where the Vikings offense ranks snapshot wise. Let's get into the state of Sam Darnold, however, as the first talking point here. So passer rating, fourth, QBR, 15th, expected points added, eighth, yards per attempt, fourth. PFF grade 16th, big time throw percentage fourth. So, depending on the category, anywhere from like fringe top five to for sure top half of the league. Yep. But one of the biggest talking points the last couple of weeks is why this dude can't get a 15 yard penalty called. And uh, Kevin, o you pulled this nugget from ESPN that Kevin O'Connell isn't the only one wondering why his quarterback doesn't get calls. Jim Harbaugh also bitching to the league about. Justin Herbert not getting some of the same 15-yard calls. So uh, are these just like missed calls or is the league reverting back to the good old days of quarterbacks getting jacked up every single week? <laughs> so this is frustrating, and it's not just because it's 
a Viking thing. Because I actually, you know what? Darnold's had a, a really nice year, and he's a, bit, he's a good story, okay? But when we're talking about the same thing happening with Justin Herbert with the Chargers, that is a star-type player, correct? And what frustrates me here is this. Every year, there's points of emphasis, right? Every year. This year, it's watch for any movement on the offensive line, procedural penalties are what we're going to crack down on. I've said this forever. This league loads up its officials with these watch for this and watch for this. So what they don't do then is they don't sweat the details like the quarterbacks, who, by the way, if the quarterbacks get hurt, the product goes down. I mean, Darnold, I'm not saying he's great, but let's see. Do I want to watch Sam Darnold lead the Vikings on Sunday, or do I want to watch Nick Mullins? It's not difficult. No offense, Nick. I'm sure you're a great guy. I'm sure you're a great dad. Great Insincere family Judd. man. Insincere Judd is exactly well, there right. There he is. There but, he is. But my frustration, and, and it's interesting, too, if you look at the verbiage that O'Connell uses to describe sort of his fact-finding mission, like he clearly has rightfully so called the league and said, what gives here? And the verbiage Harbaugh that Jim Harbaugh used in Los Angeles to describe how his attempt to find out it's basically the same they're basically it, it's almost like they've been told by the league if you're asked about this say that you're seeking clarity um because they're both basically saying the exact sa same thing i'm just I seeking think, some clarity here uh my quarterback's head was wrenched yeah exorcist style well, 180 degrees around his head and there was a bone sticking out of his neck i'm just seeking some clarity as to clarity, why that you know, just a little clarity now the rams clarity. thing now the rams face mask was egregious it's egregious. The official was looking. I didn't really see it. Okay, you are behind the quarterback, but first of all, you saw his head move. Like, his head didn't jerk like that be because he suddenly was uh, invaded by a demon. Um, the play on Sunday, though, if you go back and look at that, he takes a forearm, basically, to the helmet. Not legal. So, I think this is ridiculous, and what really gets me is it's going to take a quarterback a starting qu quarterback, probably a uh, upper tier guy, to get knocked out cold before the league says we've got to crack down. And don't forget, this is the same league in what was it, 2018, that said if you put 74.5 percent of your massive body weight, Mister Defensive Tackle or End, on a quarterback, we're throwing a flag. So it's well, I, I find it I find it a, just a completely um, it's just ridiculous that they are not protecting quarterbacks now because they're so concerned about was Jordan Addison's foot in the wrong place. I think, uh, well, you said you, you're looking for them to crack down and they're not protecting quarterbacks. I actually strongly disagree with your angle here. The league is obsessed with cracking down and protecting quarterbacks. And maybe you're right that because they're paying attention to 50,000 other things and did the right tackle move a little early and last night the Chiefs' right tackle – Yes, was moving early all night, so call that, please. Mm -hmm. But it's not – we we literally – I mean, we sit here. I mean, cheap plug. We talk about the 65, 75-inch Roku TV, right, like 4K definition. We're sitting on our couches, and we see everything in super slow motion. These referees are out here as human beings trying to call this stuff on the fly. It's really hard. So the solution is simple. Again, last night – I don't know if you guys were watching the the uh, Monday night game last night, but I think it was Xavier Worthy caught like a 40-yard pass with his back sort of to the end zone, down like inside the five-yard line near the pylon, and he catches it, and initially it was called, I think, a catch, and but his and they slow it down, of course, and right. those of us sitting watching in 4K definition see that, oh, his right foot was like half out of bounds when he made the catch, so... The eye in the sky official mm -hmm. gets a hold of the head official on the field and says, oh, hey, we just took a look real quick in 10 seconds or less. And uh, yeah, his foot was out of bounds. So let's just let's just get it right and move on with our lives. The official jumps on. All of this happens within 30 seconds. Official jumps on, tells the stadium, tells millions of people watching at home. Yep. Hey, uh, we just got word from the official watching the 4K super slow motion version that yeah, you guys are watching through. at home. Yeah. And we got that call right. But we don't apply that help to 15-yard penalties. Oh, you know what? Yeah, we just watched that. Hey, we thankfully, the 4K definition TV official upstairs saw that a defender clubbed Sam Darnold across the face, and that's a huge reason why the ball hit the ground. 
and a huge reason why they score a touchdown, right? Like, why can't we, the league, the league is, it's not for lack of like protecting quarterbacks. It's like, let the officials review 15 yard penalties. We can review anything else apparently now. Well, okay. I agree in most cases, but on Sunday I was in the press box. So I am, and it's not like I, I see really well. I got the contacts. I haven't been, I can't see far. It's been, my vision's been crap since eighth grade. I saw the flag go and Darnold's head snap. And I'm like, that's got to be a penalty. And but, yeah, but you, like the argument shouldn't be like, should humans be able to do a better job I, I getting a hundred percent of the calls, right? Well, no, no. Let them use technology to help. I'm with you. If some guy flinches, I'm not going to be like that guy flinched. That's a terrible non-call, but it's the quarterbacks and you've got officials out there looking. I mean, Sam Darnold's head in Los Angeles. I'm not going to give them any break there. They screwed the pooch on that one. So I'm with you on some things, but when it comes to protecting starting QBs, there is nothing more important. And and if the if the end result is that the referees say, well, I'm behind the quarterback, I can't see much, then change the change the observation today and have somebody you have more officials that are watching that. You can change plays. the observation. Well, it's I, called no, having someone watch the game on a 4K freaking I don't TV. Dis- I don't disagree, but what I'm saying is I'm not also going to excuse the buffoonery of some guy that sees Darnold's head snap. And by the way, they showed that play. The official's standing right there, and his head goes like, if you're watching this, this. So I'm with you Jud- on that. Judge just broke his own neck live yeah. on. Yeah, and now I, yeah. Just and Chuck no, Norris himself. My, my, my back's a mess. Anyway. Steven Seagal himself. Anyway, yes. I'm with you, but I also am not going to excuse the fact that these guys are are like the left tackles. Big toe flinched, and it's 2024. There's a flag. But I missed the other calls. Yeah, I mean, I, we can like quibble I, over over yeah. what, what humans should and shouldn't be able to do calling a play, but like. Right. The fact that we don't bail humans out when well, everybody in the world has access to technology fact, except the humans that need to make the call is well, ridiculous. But the fact that you do, though, that's the problem, right? Like replay assist, I, I think we talked about this on Monday show, replay assist stopped the game on Sunday to say that really was a first down. Like, Yeah, it, we missed spotted that ball by right. a yard, which is great. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Awesome. First down. So Let's I go, agree baby. with you fundamentally. But I also think it's ridiculous that these guys are now have gone from, oh my God, 76.7% of that guy's weight landed on the quarterback. I'm throwing my flag too. Yeah. I sort of missed this one. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second talking point, which also involves Sam Darnold. Now that we are about halfway through the season, I think we should do a categorical tale of the tape. Sam Darnold versus Kirk Cousins and where they stand in some different categories. Is that going to be triggering for anyone? If, yes. if we do if we do a comparison, we bring his name up, we do a little, hey, this was the this is the X and this is our new relationship. I just want to give people a trigger warning here. But so they can just okay. pass this part by if they you can, can fast they. forward or whatever you want to do. This is gonna be <laughs> upsetting to you. So, uh, by the way, it is interesting. Uh, they both have the exact same touchdown to interception numbers, 17 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Now, Cousins has played in one more game than Darnold. So Darnold actually averaging more touchdowns per game and then the interceptions too. Uh, so let's go into seven key quarterback categories, and I'll tell you where each of them ranks among all of the qualified NFL starters. All right. Okay. Passer rating. Darnold, fourth. Cousins, ninth. Yards per game. Darnold, 12th. Cousins, sixth. That 509-yard game doing a lot of work. Because mm-hmm. I think that's I think that was Cousins, at least going into last week, an only 300-plus-yard game. But uh, that was a hell of a performance. 500-plus yards, dagger at the end. QBR, Darnold, 15th. Cousins, 12th. Expected points added, Darnold 8th, Cousins 11th. Yards per attempt, Darnold 4th, Cousins 7th. PFF grade, Darnold 16, Cousins 15. And then big time, this is big time throw percentage is the widest gap by a mile of any of these categories. So big time throw percentage is a, 
It's like a scout's view. PFF has it listed. And I don't know exactly how the sausage is made, but it's like tighter window, could be like weighty down kind of a thing. Darnold fourth in big time throw percentage. Cousins 35th. Okay. So that either means that most of his throws are just schemed wide open and he's just doing his job or he's not making the big time throws that Sam Darnold is making. I don't know for sure. But uh, if you're scoring at home, Darnold leads four categories to three. Now there's probably, we could probably list out five more categories and go back and forth, but basically they are very similar in where they rank head to head and where they rank in some of these key categories. The biggest difference, the category that we did not mention is finances where Kirk Cousins average annual value is $45 million. Darnold 10 million trigger alert cap hit Kirk Cousins is on the book for $25 million cap hit with the Falcons this year and $28.5 million cap hit, dead cap hit with the Vikings. Darnold's cap hit is just $5 million for the Vikings this year. And then like some dead cap, I think, is it like $5 million or whatever it is for yes, next 2025? So yep. um, the fact that these guys are comparable, in fact, Darnold, you could argue, is better than Cousins in some key categories and the Vikings have that type of financial freedom, mostly 2025 and beyond, to pour money into the roster. Uh, halfway through the season, this thing looks like a huge win for the Vikings still. And there's nothing. So on the Cousins front, which you just went through, nothing surprises me. There is no Kirk game that surprises me. I, I guess I guess the early his earliest games when he came back in the first part of the season from the Achilles – you didn't know what to expect, and that first game was sort of a disaster. Uh, but since then, he's pretty much played like Kirk, including the big-time throws. Because to go back to that, like, we've talked about that. Uh, Kirk can make big-time throws. This is not to say he he can't. I think the question is, does Kirk like to? And the answer is no. Sam Darnold has no conscience about that and has a really good arm to th- make those throws. So am I surprised by Darnold's success in, in the overall scheme of things? Yes, a bit. It's a credit to himself. It's a credit to O'Connell. Um, but if you had told, if you had sat me down in July and said, this is what Kirk is going to be doing approximately halfway through with the season with the Falcons, I'd be like, of course he is. That's Kirk, including the huge games. So I, yeah, I think the most important thing is, and this is where the sour cap's not fake. I think what you just said about the cap, figures is the most important thing because you know what as of today with the deadline approaching at three o'clock central you have the ability to make moves that you wouldn't be able to make if you want to the freedom exists because your cap has about four i think it's about if i'm not mistaken according to over the cap 14 million dollars plus a little more left um and also credit just uh, backtrack a little bit here. Also credit to Quasi on the Cam Robinson trade because we all thought that they took on the majority of what was left on Cam's contract, and it turns out they didn't. So, uh, yeah, the fi- the actual game here, Phil, is the financial game. The Vikings won the financial game. Yes, and because I know there's a lot of people still like, well, wait a second. You know, Kirk was already on the hook for $28.5 million. If they would have resigned him, they could have, you know, they could have, even maybe brought that number down and shove money into the future. And of course, like the, but that's the whole game that they stopped playing, which opened up. It's not, a, it's not as much about the financial freedom it created for the 2024 books, but what happened was they freed up all of that yeah. cap space for 2025 and beyond, which is where they've, they've shoved most of the free agent money that they signed guys. So like, for instance, just for some context here, Jonathan Grenard leads all edge rushers in pressures this year. Free agent signing. Dude's been a complete, absolute stud. Perfect fit for this defense, right? They signed him to, I believe it was a four-year contract. Well, $5.5 million on the books for this year. $22 $22 million on the books in 2025, another 22 and 22. So they did big signing bonus, pro rates throughout the duration of the deal. You don't get to shove $22 million 
into 2025 as easily if Kirk has these crazy bloated cap hits, right? Another guy that they brought in, Andrew Van Ginkle, $3.5 million on this year's books. It bloats up to $12.5 million in 2025. Blake Cashman, from $3 million up to seven, up to nine in 25 and 26. So it, getting rid of Cousins wasn't as much about the immediate freedom because you're still you're still paying $28.5 million in accounting to the books, the cap hit for this year. It's being free of it beyond 2024 that allowed you to sign these defensive free agents. That's the key. And, and you also, importantly, brought in, I, I think if you go through the list for 2024 of Grenard, Van Ginkle, Gilmore, if you go down the list of guys that they brought in, I think they slightly exceed Kirk, Kirk's contract. So, like, that that's the thing is, did you want to improve your defense? And if the answer was yes, you had to find a, yeah. a way. And, you know, you can afford... A, a mega contract if it's Jefferson because he's one of the best, if not the best, at what he does. What you can afford is to is to pay a player who, let's say, is the tenth to fourteenth best at his position, like he is a top player for an extended period of time. But if you want to make a trade today, you can. Quite simply, in recent years, that was that was not as available to do. I mean, you could make some trades, but not as much as you can do now. So the win to me, financial, and that's where McCarthy's great. I mean, that's why Darnold, I don't think there's a conversation about, well, what if Sam stays? Unless Sam comes into O'Connell's office and says, I'll be a backup and I will take the same contract, right? This is why, so it, it's not a Kirk thing. It's a, what am I paying my quarterback thing? Yeah. Yeah, that's why, I mean, the you would even be better off if Darnold was clearly a level below Kirk. But your roster, like you'd still probably have, maybe you lose one extra game or something. But it's a it's a yeah. fifty three man roster, and that's the funny thing we always heard for years and years is you can't you're you're criticizing Kirk too much. It's a football's a team game. Well, if football's a team game, then why is one guy making fifteen to twenty percent of a fifty three man roster salary cap? Yeah. That is a disproportionate amount of money for someone that isn't necessarily carrying the team in the way that. Yes. A top high end quarterback should. So you uh you right sized it and you may have gotten actually a better player or at right least a size. higher performing player for a lot less money. Triggering again. Right sizing, triggering <laughs> sorry, sorry. word in this no, town. Sorry no, for any no, twins no. fans that overlap no. here. I'm sorry. Mackie. Sorry. Um let's do I have I have two more two more uh, talking points for you here. State of the offense. We'll do one more quick and then I believe we're gonna get a stud stable before the show is over and then we can we can clean up the last one but uh the running back situation is up next on state of the offense here so Aaron Jones not his best game it was kind of a bell cow game where he carried like 20 times only 3 yards a carry but he's been great so far this year Cam Akers comes in super reliable right just a guy that you can try he had 6 carries for 46 yards and it wasn't like one run for 40 and then you know, a bunch of, it was 12, 12, it was chunks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean for Ty Chandler? What Two-part question. What does this mean for Ty Chandler? Yeah. Do we care? Uh, and then <laughs> Aaron Jones and Cam Akers, I believe, are both free agents after the year. So, like, wh what does the Vikings running back room look like looking beyond 2024 at this point? Well, I think you're definitely going to, and right, right now they've got three picks. I think you're definitely going to draft one. Um that being said, I could see with what Jones has brought, I could see him coming back again. On uh, and look, he's at an age where unless he gets a team that that says, "Dude, we'll pay you three years," which I would not do, but unless a team comes down the pike, and he is he is still about to turn thirty, so there's a fighting chance. I mean, he's found a perfect fit here. It's a perfect role. He's being allowed to do all of the things that that I think he didn't feel that he got to do consistently with the Packers. Uh, now O'Connell said in his press conference on Monday that Ty Chandler very much will play a role still, you know, don't, uh, Ty Chandler's not done yet. The game flow, blah, 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 blah. I think Ty Chandler's basically done. I mean, will, will he get a carry again? Yes. Is he going to be a key guy? No. Uh, O'Connell did explain though, that the acres thing and why he fits in 
so well is, and it's why they traded for him last year, then he left for Houston and then came back in the trade, was Akers knows what O'Connell wants from their time together with the Rams and that like his knowledge of the system is so great. So it's not just like, what am I supposed to do? It's uh, I know exactly how this operates, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to sh show you this. This is the box score from Sunday. It's the Vikings right there. I love this box score. Sorry, what's highlighted there? What was what you got highlighted? Darnold's day. But but I also broke down and like if you look at this box score, okay? 33 pat or th 34 passes thrown uh or attempts by the quarterback, 32 runs. Jones 21 carries for 64 yards. That's a 3.0 average. So it's not great, but he also catches four passes for 18 yards and more importantly, 10 targets for different receivers, nine catches. Uh, but so balanced and spreading balanced the ball all and, around. Them. And and the guy at the top of that list with nine targets, seven catches, 137, is your star player. Addison, okay, five catches, 42 yards. That's not great, but a phenomenal touchdown catch. So I actually came away just from a box score and standpoint. I like this. Like this is this is a very like it's it's balanced. Jones didn't have this great day, but but he bell cowed it to you to use the term that you just did. You spread the ball around a, a lot. Your backs between Jones and Akers caught six passes for what 25, 26 yards. So I actually think in a game like that, that's a very nice distribution. And if you take away the two Darnold picks. I think we're talking about a heck of a day. Yeah, there's really nothing in that box score, and I'm glad that you have the the hard copy there for us too. I'm glad that I would say, you know what? Let me give me a pen, give me a pencil eraser, some whiteout. Yeah. I want to get rid of this and that and insert more Ty Chandler. You know, he's he's had a shot, man. Like he's had chances for now. You could argue early in his career, it's like where's Ty Chandler? But he's been given a lot of opportunities and. It's not like the Vikings are sitting there saying, boy, Aaron Jones, we're going to lock into a four-year contract. And, I mean, he's 30, dude. So you're looking for the next guy to take over this right. timeshare here and run with it. And so so much so are they disappointed in Ty Chandler that they traded more draft capital again for Cam Akers, right? That's right. kind of where we're at. Well, and I think what O'Connell uh, was saying in a little bit of code in his press conference was Cam Akers knows what, what we want from our backup. Ty Chandler perhaps does not. And and I complained about Chandler not playing a lot last year, but now that they went out and actually got a a, a grown up back in Jones, yeah. Like the level there is way different, right? Cuz like before it's like you are pounding Alexander Madison time after time and the dude can't score in the red zone. Uh Jones brings a professional approach that now it's like, okay, if the guy behind him is not doing his job exactly right, it becomes a problem. Akers, though, I think when they apply him, put him in, knows exactly how to do his job. Man, you mentioned you were looking through that box score, and I think you said Jordan Addison had like 42 yards. Yes. Ah, which stings. I I, I had on prize picks, uh, I, I took more on 45.5 as part of a part of a multiplayer play here. And just he had a great game. I think that my instincts were right. But uh, it's fun, man. Prize picks is a fun way to add a little spice to your sports viewing. And now you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You select between two and six players. You pick more or less on their projected stats. And uh, boom, you place your entry. So I'm just finalizing this one right here. We're going to go, okay, Sam Darnold, 255.5. Against, I think it's in terms of yards per pass attempt, Terrible. the second worst pass defense yes. in the entire league. Correct. And you know what? I'm going to pile on the Bears' embarrassment. The Bears. Caleb Williams, the number is 211.5. Give me less on that one. Let's just fire that one up right there. Yeah. Wow. That's right. Open that prize picks app, use the code Purple Daily, and get $50 instantly when you play just $5. That's code Purple Daily on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. Uh, Judd 
Finch Home Solutions? Yes, sir. It is their time of year to shine. Ah, uh, well, here's the thing. 12 months a, a year, my friend Cody Finch and his team, and you're looking at the vans. This could be this morning from Finch Home Solutions. Look at those colors. Do they look familiar? Of course they do, because these two guys, these guys love two things, the Vikings and making sure that your home is safe, at least from an electrical point of view. You have uh, flickering lights. Guess what? That can be a problem. Or perhaps you need a big job done. It's a remodel in your kitchen. Finch Home Solutions can take care of the wiring for that. Anything that you need, big or small. Let's say, you know what? It's getting to be chilly outside. Hot tub season is here, right, guys? Well, Love Finch Home Finch Home Solutions can do all of the electrical wiring for that. And a special offer for uh, PD fans right now from Finch, 10% off all work plus one year of Finch friends and family membership with a qualifying project. Uh, that includes priority dispatch, annual safety check, 10% discount on all future work. Finch Home Solutions, 612-357-2604 or finchhomesolutions.com. Finchhomesolutions.com. Make sure that your home is safe and sound and Finch can help you do that. Hey, Federated Insurance is like having a great offensive line for your business. You're a business owner. You are clearly busy. You're overseeing uh, employees. And your job is to grow your business. Well, Federated comes in with a game plan to stay focused on safety, preventing claims, risk management. So you can be the quarterback, survey the plays down the field while your offensive line, your insurance partner, Federated, is looking out for your best interest. Let the team at Federated support your business. You can go to federatedinsurance.com and you can find out about their history, which goes back to 1904, based in Owatonna, Minnesota. And you can also find a full list of industries that Federated specializes in and helps. At Federated Mutual Insurance Company, it's our business to protect yours. Uh, so category four here, Cam Robinson and the offensive line. So just a quick, uh... by the way, I forgot earlier in the show, I want to shout out uh uh, Blake Palanch is a longtime listener of Purple Daily, and it's his birthday today. His awesome wife sent a message to the show Happy birthday, and boy. said, my husband, Blake, Love is it. a big fan, and uh, we appreciate that. So, Blake, hopefully you have a happy birthday. Hopefully you guys can enjoy a nice dinner or maybe rewatch, I don't know, uh, the Vikings-Cowboys playoff game yeah. from the 2009 playoffs or something. And here, here is the real question for Blake. Will the Vikings bring him a gift wrap present by 3 p.m. today? Oh, could it Trey be Dad, could, uh, could it Dexter be, Lawrence? I was huh? going to say, huh? what, if, what if Blake huh? gets a Dexter Lawrence? A little sexy Dexy? J.C. Horn? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. So Cam Robinson was, was gift wrapped for like a late round pick. So he was credited with four pressures allowed. Didn't feel that way. There was definitely one. There was one where he had he had chip help off the left from one of the tight ends and still let edge rusher beat him on the inside. But um, largely, he he it didn't didn't seem like he was derailed at really any point. Blake Brandle was actually credited with all three sacks given up, even the one where Bradbury stepped on Ingram's foot. And I don't, I'd have to go. Maybe Booney can help straighten us out this week on trenches. Ed Ingram was largely fine, according to PFF. Um, run blocking, Cam Akers ripped off two 12-yard runs right off the left end, left tackle area, which was great. Mm -hmm. So offensive line did not seem to be a huge issue in the absence of Darisai. You still have the Dalton Reisner lever to pull if you want to. I want to highlight this, this uh, set of Sam Darnold kept clean numbers. It's an offensive line stat. 88% completions on Sunday night for Sam Darnold when he was kept clean. Nine yards per pass attempt. In fact, on the season, Sam Darnold is fifth in completion percentage among all quarterbacks when kept clean. He's fourth in yards per attempt, and he's fourth in average depth of target. So hunting down the field when he's kept clean. So that's going to be... You wonder, why did they trade for Cam Robinson? Because when Sam Darnold's kept clean, oh, yeah. he is a borderline oh. top five quarterback in the NFL. Keep his ass clean. 
and th- this is the question now too. Do you try to work Dalton Reisner in at one of the guard spots because he is good in pass pro? He's not great as a run blocker, but he's good in pass pro. And if I'm not mistaken, Phil, um, I believe Blake Randall also did not grade out real well in the game against the Rams. Now, they like him a lot, so I don't think that, that his job's in jeopardy. But Reisner's presence now as a healthy option is intriguing because of the Darnold factor there. Um, yes. And and you know what? Again, kudos to the Vikings and Quasi for going out and addressing left tackle immediately. That was, you know, zero position of need. Darisaw is one of the best. He gets hurt, and instead of, oh, poor, pathetic us, we'll move Brandle, we'll kick Brandle out, and we'll play Dalton. They went out and immediately addressed it. And we can go back and forth about the draft pick compensation, but when you have a chance to win now, which this team does in an NFC that has one great team and everybody else sort of, or, or there's a lot of teams close, I think the Vikings deserve a ton of credit for that. I really yeah. do. Yep. Yeah. So that's kind of, it will continue to monitor the offense. It's a revenge game too for Cam Robinson, the team that benched him, the team that traded him away for nothing, wasn't going to re-sign him. Of course, the team that also drafted him and stuck with him for like eight years. But uh, Cam Robinson versus the Jaguars. I think all of the NFL universe is going to be watching this weekend. (laughs) Is that what we're watching? Yes, it's going to be coming up. Flex it. Yes. Flex it. NBC wants it. The Cam Robinson Cam. All right, he is the most passionate Vikings fan we know. You can find him on Twitter slash X at RandyVikes69. He is Randy in Cottage Grove. Randy, thank you. what's thank going you. on, man? Uh, well, uh, for those of you who weren't uh, didn't know, uh, I was uh, had a, I was hospitalized. What? what? I was uh, I had to spend a few uh, nights uh, in one of our local... Uh, medical facilities uh, dealing with a re- recurrence of a, a chronic condition that I've had uh, for for a lot of a lot of years now and it was it was a real bad flare and uh, I just barely got out in time to, to see the game thanks to the the docs they, they did me a solid I, I mean I I guess on one hand I don't want to be too personal on the other hand we feel like we we know you fairly well just having had you call into our old radio show and now this so what um are you okay? What what kind of condition are we are we talking about here? Well, it's a we we we, we tamped it. We you know we cooled it down as as they say. This is the tinea cruris. I'm not ashamed to talk about it. Uh, it's a lot of men deal with a lot of a lot of people deal with it. A lot of guys Wait, deal with it. You and, were uh, uh, tinea. You said tinea cruris. Tinea cruris. Uh, so you were a, it's a skin just a, just for clarity. You were you were hospitalized for jock itch. That's a that's a slang term that. A lot of us who struggle don't appreciate, but yeah, that is one that. term for it. Uh, that's that's an over-the-counter sort of term, and, and in this case, some of the do you over-the-counter... stay over you keep keep you overnight for that, or how how does that work? Three nights, uh, uh, three nights there. Uh, this was severe. Uh, it Which was it, they 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 said that some of the some of the symptoms I I was having uh, more closely resemble a, a, a sort of a second degree burn. Um, what? And it was a, a lot of chafing. Uh, chafing, rubbing, uh, and chafing and rubbing and and raw, like raw, raw. A lot of words. Because yeah, I'm an athlete, Football. you know. I I do a lot of things. Uh, I'm active, you know. I'm an active. People say you turn 55 plus, you're not. I'm active. I, I bowl. I, I I ump. I coach. You know. I I, I like to. And, and at the bar, we're active too. We don't just sit at the stool all day. We run around. We high five, hoot and holler. We work up a sweat, and if you don't uh, take care of it, cool it down, it can get a mind of its own, and that's to near curse. And a lot of people who listen, who know what it's what it's about, they're not laughing. Listen, I mean, three nights in the hospital, did, man, that is... Did you go right to wow. the bar to watch the game or at least go home? That's one complaint I had about this particular hospital. Perhaps it's it's how they all operate, but they you can't get a beer. Like you ask for, I say, say, what can we get you? You know, get a little menu, whatever. I said, I, t- I take a co- couple of cold ones. You can charge me for them. They, you know, this have, is why people offer. need. This is why people need to vote like their life depends on it, so we can get beer in hospitals, right? Just a couple, you know, that's crazy. Great, actually, but, yeah. And I said, well, I said, I said, is it all right? You know, if my, my friend Doug brings in a sixer. They said, no, absolutely not. So I, I tried to get out of there as quick as possible, and I did. Jeff, go straight to the bar because we. I got out uh, Sunday morning, 
and I went I, I went to the bar. We got rolling about one or two, and by the time we we kicked off, I was it was good and loose. Wow, I mean, what a what a eventful weekend for you. So, but everything is has has cooled down as, as you as you put it. Everything, the, you know, a lot okay. of the a lot of the people uh, and some of the fans were giving me some nice suggestions on on Twitter. They said, uh, you know, try uh, you know, tough acting, tin acting, or low term men. Yes, John Madden was uh, was always those don't work. Tough acting, those, those those are those are child's play for what the kind of a case I'm dealing with. And we got, we, we have full, full, this is as good as it gets. This is the heavy artillery creams that I've got now. And it, it's going to be better. We, we, we're going to turn a corner, but what, yeah. 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 but you know, the, the, I know why it happened who it, it's because they said the complicating factor is the stress. You get a flare. If you get stressed up, you get a flare. Well, we lost two in a row and I got, I was, I was pissed. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I listen, the NFL season's a roller coaster ride. So I would either have some of that cream nearby. You know, it's a three, it's a three game road set here. Just deep breaths, everybody. Okay. But I saw the game and we're back on track. The flare is, is cooling down and, and the offense is, is, you know, did their job. The defense really did their job. And so okay. we, we're back on, on track. Okay. Didn't, didn't mean to make light there. Just, uh, you know, Never heard of someone three, getting hospitalized three, three nights, nights for jock itch, right? Just, three nights. I would just like, like to know who, who your Sorry. insurance company is. That's what I want to know. Like when you, when they I submit me- jock itch for three nights, that's what I'd like to know. I got Medicare now. It's great. It, 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 it'll take care of anything. I, yeah, I mean, I, I well, think clearly, pr- the proof is this weekend. It's, it's, clearly it's great, man. So, uh, right. well, listen, hey, the Vikings back in the win column for the first time in a few weeks. I think it's time for a stud stable here from Randy and Cottage Grove. Randy Vikes, 69. The floor is yours. This is a, a, a this is a this particular one. I'm very glad we were able to win because it was a labor of love uh, to get out of the hospital in time and and be able to watch this game. Uh, thank you to all the doctors who helped me. Mm. Uh, and uh, the first person I'd like to mention in this stable is someone who. He's just starting to finally kind of get get a little get. He got a little chirpy, as they say. On uh, he posted something wanting more touches, and then he tried to back it, walk it back. It's okay to want more touches when you're going to make catches like that, Jordan Addison. You know, mm-hmm. you you that that ball was a what they put it in a spot where this they say only he can catch it, and then he caught it, and that was that was the catch of his career. It's a young career, but that was the catch of his career. And Jor- Jordan Addison, you're a stud. Mm. Mm. Or disagree, yeah. Phenomenal. Sam Darnold. Uh, you know, a lot of people like to, the, the, the national narrative is you're just this cast, cast off. You know, you're, you, you, you try it out here, you try it out there, see where you're going to stick. You, you, what you do is you battle, Sam. You battle and you, and you, you, uh, you, 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 you got a guy who now in KOC who believes in you. And then that means we believe in you too. So even though you're not going quite as deep with those Sammy deep these is earlier in the year. You're you're getting there. You're throwing them, and 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 I'd like you to air it out. I'd like you to sling it. Maybe you'd like to too. And KOC take a chance, take a couple chances. But today you did it all right. And and for a, a team that really had to make a victory happen, can't go three in a row like that. Sam Donald, you're a stud. Hmm. Stud. We'll stay on the offense for one more guy. What can, what can you say about him that hasn't been said? And that's Justin Jefferson. Justin. You, you're going to set all the records when it's all said and done. You might set all the records. You look at these the last, like, who, five years, who, how many rookies till year five, all their stats. People do that math. I do the math in my eyes. I do the math in my eyes, and I see Same. a guy who, who says, give, give me the rock. Give me the rock in a big spot. And you do it over and over and over again. And we were snug and, and cool and dry down there, and it was great. Justin Jefferson, you're a stud. So dry, yeah. Thankfully, very cool. And I want to send a special shout out now, one one time, to to a guy on defense who I don't think he's been in the stable yet because he hasn't been in the league very long. But he sure showed up on Sunday. He sure showed up when the lights were bright. And that's Dallas Turner. Dallas, when we drafted you, I was so snug. All of us didn't think there was a chance we'd leave the first round with a couple of studs. Well, we did. And I am so excited that you're part of this squad. I'm so excited that you're part of this team going forward. And I am so excited that right now, this week, you are a stud. Mm, um, and there he goes. There, that's it. 
That's it. There Randy he goes. Hospital. Randy has and left he went the right chat. to the bar, and I'm not surprised by any of this. I, I you think I, I think I have snuck in a beer at a hospital before. Well, you do, first of all, it, don't ask permission. Right. Like, of yeah, course, you don't ask permission. Tell. Yeah, you right. put it in the coat. Yeah. Put it in the coat. You can't yeah. just walk in with yeah. you know a six or a under your arm. Padres. Yeah, you can't can't be doing that. It's not like a dorm. No, don't just ask for forgiveness later, I think would be the, but boy, I, I guess I didn't know that there were cases of jock itch so bad that you had to spend three nights in the hospital. I that think was... it might be time for him to retire from his activities. Or maybe do a little laundry once in a while. That's a good point. Probably another way to. Baby powder, yeah. To do it. Um, so, um, boy, I'm thankful for, thankful for AG1. On weekends, weeks like this last week, man, um, where, you know, you get a little bug or something, you're looking to looking to feel rejuvenated and AG1 simplifies the health process by replacing multiple health supplements like multivitamins, digestive aids, immune support, and more in just one simple scoop or one of these travel packs. Trusted by top athletes all over the world, AG1 is a simple, comprehensive foundational nutrition supplement for whole body health. So ensure you're giving your body the nutrients it needs to thrive with AG1. And um, you can go to drinkag1.com slash purple daily to take ownership of your health. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five of these AG1 travel packs. I'm full on travel packs now, by the way. No more scoops for me. I like to just Boom, oh, yeah. pop it in the, maybe in the morning or middle of the day. Absolutely. Shake it up. Yep. Uh, insincere Judd making an appearance you don't here. You have to measure it. No, that's my, no, I, no, I do not like the measurement thing. I don't like that. Travel pack, it's right there for you. Drinkag1.com slash purple daily. That's drinkag1.com slash purple daily. Sincere as I can be right there. We have, by the way, uh, last week we sprinkled it in. We have decided, I think going forward here the rest of the year, for the pigskin pecking order to be A, led by Judd, and B, a standalone episode every week. Now that we know the Vikings are, you know, in the top 10, right? I think it'll be a fun exercise the next two months until the end of the season. Now, we probably just jinxed it. Now they're going to lose three road games. Right and this Oh, wow. Order. Oh, a lot can of we research z- is going in, into this. Pause it and zoom in. in. We'll see. No, 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 no. You have to wait for the other episode of PD. To hear the, it this is a very this is a science now, like this is taking me an hour of breaking down schedules and who's doing like this is this is crossed because what I want to know is am I properly representing the Vikings? So instead of like eyeballing the standings, right? It's like oh they're pretty good. Um no 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 we're we're how many down. do you rank? How many teams do you rank? Is it I mean like behind the scenes? I know you're gonna do probably ten for the yeah. show. Um, I've do got, you rank everyone, and then you just no, show us the ten, no, or do you stop your process at ten? No, no, no. It's um, it stops at fifteen. Okay. I have, I have fifteen potential teams, and 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 much like the NCAA basketball tournament, I have a first out. <laughs> so just like you love you eleven basically, there, and then, there's an eleven okay. team that's the first out. I love this. I'm I'm They're very hosed right now, but they might not be later. We don't know irrationally excited about this. Um, is this a real story that just came out? Norv Turner has come out of retirement yes. to join yeah, but- Scott Turner on the Raiders remodel, remodeled offensive staff. Remodeled. You mean uh, remodeled meaning, yeah, they literally fired their entire offensive coaching staff yesterday. Yes. And Norv Turner is coming to the rescue mid-season. <laughs> Norv's always around, always available, just sitting on the couch waiting. That is amazing. Uh, all right, Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. 